Hey guys, I share with another Rage Shadow Legends Champion guide. As I mentioned on the Umbral Enchantress guide yesterday, I am back to Monday through Friday here on the channel. I was traveling last week, so expect your five champion guides per week and keep the recommendations coming. Speaking of recommendations, I do not have the time, nor do you, to give a shout out to everybody who's requesting a Valkyrie guide here on the channel, uh, but I will show them in the background one of the most popular legendary requests. Valkyrie is an old school champion in the game, and it's funny, I get a blend in terms of my most requested champions or your most requested champions. I get a blend of the really old school champions because I feel like there's no updated guides or there's a lack of updated guides and then the new champions as well. So I'll continue to make those happen for you guys. Again, can't give everybody a shout out, but without further ado, let's go ahead and see what Valkyrie does. <laughs> So Valkyrie is indeed a Barbarian Spirit Affinity. She's, uh, again, she's an old school champ. Some of the old school ones, they don't age as well aesthetically, but Valkyrie does, man. She's still got that look about her. Just a really, really awesome looking champion overall. Obviously, uh, well, yeah, she's, uh, <laughs> she's really good looking. She does have champion lore. I'm not going to read it to you guys, but if you want to go ahead and check that out in game, they've been adding champion lore every update. I think they added like 25 in the last update as well. Personally, I don't read all champion lores, but some of like the, the quintessential raid champions, I think it's worth taking a moment out and giving him a read every so often, especially if you have them, right? Which if you don't have them, why are you watching the video? It can't because of my amazing personality, that's for sure. Uh, Defense-based champion, guys. Very uh, nice defense, 1597 on the base defense, one of the highest out there in the game, so it scales very easily, which is great because we're going to need it for her A2. Uh, her speed, 104, she's pretty fast. Her H -poi, H -poi? HP leaves a little bit something to be desired at 17.8, but still all that defense definitely makes up for it. She has an aura defense and fashion crisp by 33%, definitely one of the best faction war uh, champions out there for barbarians, no doubt about that on her a1 is a two-time hitter decreased tur uh, turn meter by 10 percent on each hit if the target has any buffs that's actually really good nice little control there especially in areas like the arena or in waves uh, or against any uh, boss that has buffs up right on the a2 uh awkwardly i should say it scales off of attack and defense on the A1. I wish they would just drop the attack and bump the defense up a little bit on that A1. On Stand Firm, it's a three-turn cooldown win book. This is definitely a champion that we want to book. If there was ever a legendary to book in this game, Valkyrie is definitely it. She's one of the three champions in the game with a counterattack buff. It's still the same three as it was 40 years ago. Skullcrusher, Valkyrie, and Martyr. That's it. Attacks all enemies. Plays a shield buff on all allies for three turns on a three-turn cooldown. That's great. Uh, and counterattack for two turns. The value of the shield is, in, is proportional to this champion's defense. So the higher we can get that defense, the better the shield will be. And this is one of, if not the best shields inside the entire game okay but it doesn't stop there her only active ability is stand firm right her a2 her passive is amazing as well jealousy this champion's term will be increased by 10 percent each time an enemy champion places a buff okay so the uh enemy champions will have their term here decrease by 10 percent for each buff they receive that's amazing. It allows her to cut in line in arena situations. Heck, it allows her to cut in line in any situation. When I say cut in line, I mean that, you know, let's say her speed is 100 in the, uh, or 200, and the champion that we're, we're going against has a 210 speed. They're all at 210 speed, right? Well, all they have to do is an arbiter just gives them buffs, and boom, it bumps her turn meter such that she will, you know, be, be susceptible, or they'll be susceptible for her to jump ahead of of them right maybe armor wasn't the best example because she's also turn meter boosting by 30 percent on that ability but you guys get the point right uh it's a great ability because the more the buffs are given out on the enemy team the more both their turn meters go down and hers goes up you do need a lot of accuracy especially in the arena to pull this off it is an accuracy check obviously to reduce the enemy's turn meter notably there's no cooldown on this ability on jealousy so it just happens every time that they're receiving buffs right 
Nice and easy. All right, guys, that's the kit. That's it on Valkyrie, okay? I want to show you her ratings and her multipliers. So this is thanks to hellhades.com. Uh, clan boss, five out of five. She is the old school quintessential clan boss champion. Counterattack back in the day, every clan boss team was using a counterattack champion. If you didn't have Valkyrie, you were using Martyr. If you didn't have Martyr, you were using Skull Crusher. Now, not so much, but still incredibly cap capable and potent champion for clan boss. Hydra four. And Hydra, you got to be careful. Don't want counterattack to be stolen by a Hydra head, you know? So I don't love her in Hydra. I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, but certainly can be a formidable nuker and shielder and counterattack can be powerful in your hands, right? Uh, Doom Tower Ways, four and a half. Iron Twins, four. Spider, four and a half. Fire Knight, five. Fire Knight Hard, five. She's one of the best Fire Knight Hard and Fire Knight champions in the game because of that counterattack, right? Getting that shield down. Ice Golem, four, and a four on hard. Same sort of situation, well, I guess for different reasons. It's not because of the counterattack, it's because of the shield. Ice Golem hits very hard out of the four traditional bosses, hits the hardest. So we have that nice, big, juicy shield to keep the team alive. And then Doom Tower, you can see the ratings. Scarab King, for obvious reasons, a five. Frostbiter, four and a half. Eternal Dragon, four. Celestial Griffin, four uh, and a half. Four on Nether Spider. I mean, it, she's amazing everywhere. We have a 1.7 attack and a, zero's point, uh, a 0 0.6 on the defense on the A1. We have a three multiplier on the A2, on the AoE, okay? Because she has so much defense, though, that three actually feels like more of a four to me, right? A very capable either primary on a go second team or secondary arena nuker. I ran her as my arena nuker for a long time. Uh... I think she's really good, but I don't like to depend on her as my only damage dealer on the team. I like to have another option, whether it's, you know, a little bit, you know, same sort of situation, a support slash nuker as a Valkyrie uh, or an all out nuker, right? So I'm going to run another defensive nuker alongside of her in today's video uh, in the arena. So. I will not buy all these packs. Uh, I'm going to show you the build that I have her on. There's a few different ways you can build Valkyrie. She's she's a really versatile champion, right? I have her in Reflex. I love Valkyrie in Reflex, man. I mean, I, I'm i biased because I'm using it, but it's my favorite build on, on Valkyrie, right? You can go with anything that gives you defensive stats, like an old school defense set too, because the more defense, the better. And it scales so incredibly well. So anything with defense percentage is going to be great on Valkyrie, right? Don't be afraid to just load up on as much defense as you can possibly put on her. Reflux is great because it has a 40% chance to reduce a random skill cooldown by one turn. Well, it's not going to be random on Valkyrie. It's always going to be stand firm. It's always going to be her A2. So that gives the potential in a reflex set of getting this counterattack up on all allies all the time, essentially, right? Or refreshing the shield on a two turn cooldown, the best shield in the game. That's really, really powerful. I'm going to show you guys how powerful that is in today's video. So, again, as I mentioned, we do need accuracy on her. 257 is not going to be enough to routinely land jealousy inside the arena on the passive, okay? Uh, I gave her Polymorph because I used to have Polymorph on Valkyrie when I ran her with more accuracy and I ran her at a higher volume in the arena. So uh, I have her three-star awakened here. We do get the nice defense boost off of the uh, the Polymorph as well. You could really go so many different directions with Valkyrie, right? You could get the HP and go with Smite on Brimstone. Uh, you could build her as more of a nuker in a, in a crushing rend if you want to. Heck, you could put her in Intimidating Presence. You get defense there as well strengthen your team's aura uh so i don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong way to go out of all of those blessings i'm gonna keep now you know i'm actually gonna keep take polymorph off i'm gonna put her in intimidating presence for today's video okay uh for or, or masteries excuse me uh, nothing wrong at all with going offense on Valkyrie. I want to be very clear about that. Uh, I would just go with pin, uh, Deadly Precision, excuse me, Keen Strike, and come right down the left-hand side and end off on War Master if I was going to go uh, on the offensive side of things. Uh, and then you can make the choice, defense or support. Or you can go with, de like I have here, defense and support. Now, this is kind of an arena-ish build. But it's certainly applicable to all PvE environments as well. You're just not going to get as much damage unless you go Warmaster with Valkyrie, okay? Uh, 
Now, on the support side of things, we can go with accuracy if we want to. Come down, Swarm Smiter. We can come down with Evil Eye. Uh, we can go Lore of Steel if we need it and end uh, on Spirit Haste. Instead, I went with more max HP, increased the value of Shield. I think that Shield Bear is probably the most important or it's up there in terms of what we want on this champion, right? We want those value of Shields to be higher. And then Healing Saviors, obviously there's no heals going on, but it does affect Shields. So does Merciful Aid. And then I come all the way down with Lasting Gifts to extend the duration specifically of the counterattack. Lasting Gifts can extend duration of counterattack, which is really, really nice. So that's the route that I have here. I also have Cycle of Magic. On the defensive side of things, I came down Blast Proof. I picked up uh, Delay Death, Resurgent, Retribution, uh, Cycle of Revenge, and I came all the way down with Iron Skin, another 200 defense. I don't pick out Iron Skin a lot on champions inside this game, but if there's ever a champion we want to pick out Iron Skin and go with more defense, it's it's going to be Valkyrie, right? Uh, I've even seen Valkyries built with a higher resistance. I don't love that build unless you really need it, right? Because I like to save my best resistance gear for cleansers as well. And she's certainly not cleansing in her kit. Uh, but anyway, guys, really quickly through the artifacts here, we have accuracy on the banner. I have defense on the amulet. I have defense on the ring. I have defense percentage on the gauntlets, defense percentage on the chest, speed on the boots, okay? Uh... Now, there's a whole other way we can utilize Valkyrie on top of this, right? We can simply build her as a nuker, right? So I'm going to show you Tormund, who I'm going to be running in the same team as her in the arena today, right? I would use a very Tormund-esque build for the arena on Valkyrie, right? Throw her in stone skin or throw her in perception because we really want that jealousy for the arena. So this build that I have here on Tormund is actually what I would use on Valkyrie if I just wanted to utilize her as an arena Nuker, shielder, counterattack, an arena champion, control with the jealousy, accuracy, crit damage, defense, uh, crit damage on the gauntlets, defense percentage on the chest, and speed on the boots. Okay, so these are Tormund's total stats, and that's exactly how I would I would build uh, Valkyrie for a nuke build. So we have enough accuracy there as well, and these are the masteries. Okay, so I wanted to show you Tormund and her back to back because it's really exactly the build that I would use. Uh, but with Valkyrie. We want to use her in more than just the arena. Frankly, we're not using her a ton in the arena anymore. So the 6,500 on the defense is actually a, a lot lower than you typically see, especially in the end game. A lot of end game players will be way north of 8,000 on the defense on Valkyrie, right? I've seen even 9,000. I'm sure there's over 10,000 defense possible if you have her fully empowered and blessed and blessing out. Uh, but for the purposes of our video today, this is going to be just fine, okay? So 46, we don't want to totally neglect HP. We have 6,500. We have her very fast. 275, we don't care so much about damage because we need her fast in the reflex set to get the full utility out of her in Fire Knight Hard. So I want to start with Fire Knight Hard, guys. Fire Knight Hard, the reason she's so good is because of the shield and the counter. I mean, they're both, she keeps the team alive with the shield, the A2, right? She keeps the team alive. Yeah, we have Cardial, Valkyrie, Foley, Cold Heart, and Tomb Lord, okay? This is Stage 10, Ice Golem Heart, or excuse me, a Fire Knight Heart. If you don't have all these champions, not the end of the world, right? Uh, you're probably not, you know, on Stage 10 hard. Maybe you are. There's a lot of different strategies. This is just my best Valkyrie team that I have. It's not the fastest Valkyrie team that I have, but it's 100% success rate. The reason it's not the fastest is because getting through these waves takes quite a long time. The mobs are level 350, and well, I have to A1 the cycle on the second wave. So you can see we're using all of our abilities in the first round, it doesn't take that long, but the second round, I'm shutting off everything. I want everything to be fresh going into the Fire Knight, especially Valkyrie's A2. Uh, but I just wanna finish up the, the, the speed part of the conversation. I push the speed as much as possible on Valkyrie here uh, in this particular dungeon because we want her to be lapping the ice, or I keep saying ice golem. We want her to be lapping the fire knight and getting that counterattack and shield up every time that his turn meter is about to fill, right? And you'll notice that she actually led off with her A2. I have them lead opening with their best moves and then not using them again. That way we can cycle our A1s after that. So let me come back to you guys when we get to the fire knight. All right, guys, here we go against the Fire Knight. We just opened up with the A2, so you can see everybody has their counterattack. And, I mean, the whole point of, of this team's strategy is a race against time because we don't have healers on this team, right? 
So we need to make sure that we get that shield down as quickly as possible. We stay alive. And Valkyrie is instrumental in both of those areas, right? You can see the shield is nice and refreshed. The Ice Golem goes in with his attack. Everybody stays alive and everybody stays pretty topped off in terms of health. Now, I want to cover, really, I just want to mention, I should say, that on my Colt Heart, I have her built a little bit differently as well. She's not all out nuker cold heart. She's actually all out staying alive and then having enough accuracy to land the heal reduction, right? Uh, so she's she has a hundred percent crit rate, but you know she's built like a tank. She has a lot of HP, a lot of defense because she needs to stay alive too, right? Same thing with everybody on this team. So it's really not so much about the actual damage; it's more about survival, okay? And obviously Valkyrie is going to help out tremendously. This is everybody counterattacking from that last. AOE from the Fire Knight, thanks to Valkyrie's shield. So Valkyrie's job now is reflex gear, hopefully to kick in. If it doesn't, she's still fast enough where it should be okay, and the rest of the team is fast enough as well, right? I would advise you guys, if you play live arena, I would prioritize Hydra for your, what is it called? The secondary Great Hall, whatever the heck it is. I would prioritize uh, uh, Hydra and Fire Knight. At least that's where I put all of my points in. So I start with speed in both categories and then going to, you know, whatever you think you would benefit you the most. Uh, for Fire Knight specifically, I think it's it's defense uh, and HP, right? Survivability is, is what it's all about. But you guys can see, again, it's not the fastest team in the world by far, but it is 100% success rate. And that's the most important thing to me because usually when I'm doing long farming sessions, it's, it's overnight, right? It's overnight and I don't really care if it takes five minutes. So I'll come back to you guys at the end to this battle i think you guys get the point here we'll go into the arena have a little bit of valkyrie fun all right guys quite a bit lower than our normal uh time here i should mention uh th at 343 is our, our fastest time so usually around like four four and a half minutes i would say for this team uh you guys can see the damage and whatnot again valkyrie's not there for the damage there it's mainly tune lord uh mainly tune lord and and foley's job there and in a little cold heart as well all right guys so going into the arena here we're gonna go ahead and use this go second team we have Tormund. We have Vogoth in a bolster set, and we have Mithrala in triple perception, and we have, obviously, Valkyrie. So, let's see what we can do with this Go Second team. I love it because we don't have a Reviver, but we have so much support on this team. Uh, just got to be careful with the speeds here. We don't want Mithrala to go ahead. We, we want Mithrala to go ahead of Valkyrie with the A2. So we get the nice big shield from Valkyrie and the obviously setting up with the increased defense is going to be paramount to make that happen, right? So that's like the only downside is with having Mithrala on the team, probably better off just having another increased defense champion since they both have the shield as well. Uh, but we are going to be just fine here. Let's go ahead and go to... Yeah, I want to try to find like the, the most difficult teams that we possibly can here to face. None of these look that challenging. Let's go to... Let's just try a quick speed... Okay, this is a tanky... No, no, no. They don't have a DPS on this team, man. Come on. Come on. Uh, let's go against... No, none of these look that hard either. I need to push a little bit more before I make these videos. Let's just go against a quick speed team, and then we'll try to find like a... Uh, a tougher team to go against here. But obviously against the go first team, this team's like, I mean, they can't do anything to us, right? Sure, you can freeze us, but you can't kill us, you know? Uh, and again, I would maybe run, let's see, what other increased defense champions would I love to run? You can run a freaking Iron Brago if you wanted to, really. Another Valkyrie here uh, on this squad. Here we go. This is a good team. And the cool thing about this team is we have a lot of opportunity for her to cut in line with Jealousy. Let's see if we notice it. Boost turn meter, boost turn meter, boost turn meter, boost turn meter. That's all Jealousy passive. Even with a, six, a 270 accuracy or whatever she's at right now, right? Still a lot of turn meter boost. Just happens, remember, all they need to do is get a buff. It's pretty crazy, right? And you can see, I love having Torment on the team too. It's just nice control, keeping Valkyrie nice and uh, CC'd there. And Tormund, like, like you saw earlier, he's built out to be a nuker as well. So we have two damage dealers. Valkyrie, ideally, we'd have her 100% crit rate. Put out a little bit more damage as well. Uh, but the most important thing, as I mentioned a few times now, is having an increased defense setting her up, right? For more damage and a bigger shield as well. Because it's proportional to her current defense, not just her base defense. Keep that in mind. Uh, so beautiful control here. Even Vogoth is landing some provokes. Everybody's getting in on it. Provoke from Tormund, provoke from Vogoth. 
Get the jealousy from Valkyrie, the counterattacks. The reason I love uh, Tormin on a team with Valkyrie, another reason, is not only are they they're both defense-based and both requiring the same buffs to operate at their full efficiency, but also I love pairing Valkyrie with champions who have an AoE on their A1, right? So having a defense-based champion with the AoE on the A1, especially a strong AoE on the A1, or even like a Fenax or something like that with a Deny Revival and a hard-hitting A1, you're able to get a lot of synergy there, right? Because those counterattacks are hitting everybody. In the case of Tormund, we're hitting everybody, doing some decent damage, and at the same time, having a chance to freeze them on top of all of that, right? So it's a really powerful move. Happens every turn because it's a two-turn, maybe three-turn with Lasting Gifts on a two-turn cooldown with Reflex. So any or three-turn cooldown with Reflex. Flex. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this guide for Valkyrie, a tremendous champion, certainly S tier, 5 out of 5, just still one of the best 25 or 30 champions in the game, in the opinion of yours truly. What do you guys think of Valkyrie? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.